Our next guest has a hedge fund. He has a mutual fund. He's a lawyer, and he's crunched the accounting numbers on a number of companies in about 56 different countries. He's a pretty busy guy. His name is Paul Dietrich. He is chairman and CIO of Foxhall Capital Management. Paul, thanks for coming up from Washington, D.C. to join us. You predicted that the Greek referendum would go by the wayside. You were right. Uh, why did you predict that? Well, I was looking, I was counting votes, uh, and it was quite clear that they did not have the votes in the Greek parliament uh, and within the uh, Prime Minister uh, Papandreou's party. And so I couldn't. I couldn't figure out how that was going to work with all the pressure that they were getting from the United States, France, and Germany. All right, so that one, one vote down or not happen, another vote, however, tomorrow, do you think he can hold on his job? I think he probably will. Uh, but I think the real problem is, and the next shoe to fall, uh, is, is going to be the European banks. I mean, as part of this agreement, European banks have got to raise a significant amount of capital from private sources like in the U.S. and in China. And uh, assets of, of European banks as a percentage of GDP uh, of European countries is a magnitude higher uh, than it is here in the United States. In other words, States. there's more leverage in the system, you're saying? There is, and, uh, and it's also more important. So if, if the banks are affected negatively, it really affects the, the GDP and uh, the health of the economy over there. And what we're looking at is they haven't done any of the work uh, that, uh, that U.S. banks have done in bringing down their... Uh, uh, in writing down their, their real estate, both commercial and residential real estate. Uh, and people forget that residential and commercial real estate has gone up higher in Europe than it did here in the United States. There's really a bubble there. And they haven't done any of the write downs. So their assets are, are worth a lot less than what's showing on the books. And then you have sovereign debt, which is your safest debt. They just took a haircut of 50% of on Greece. Portugal today is asking for a new haircut. If Italy asks for a haircut, I mean, even a four or five percent, that would be a body blow uh, to the European banks. And this is a ticking time bomb. It is the next crisis we are going to face. And by the way, just to, to let everyone know, uh, watching, this is a live shot of George Papadreou in Athens right now. Obviously, he's facing that vote tomorrow. Will he be able to hold on to his job, Lisa? Well, let me ask you, though, is, is Greece at this point an unnecessary distraction? I mean, we have the, what we call the Troika at this point, seemingly entirely focused on events in Greece. They can only stay up so many hours a day. I mean, should they really maybe be f more focused on European banks at the moment? Well, this is the tip of the spear. I mean, uh, everyone agrees that they can deal with Greece, but the fear is contagion. And we saw a little bit of that today uh, with uh, Portugal. Uh, we're going to see it uh, with Italy. I mean, Prime Minister Berlusconi is just about, his government's just about ready to fall. And if a pro-business government cannot get through cuts uh, in spending, you can imagine that a socialist government has not going to have the will to do these things. So this is a real serious problem, and Greece is just the tip of the spear. Why are we rallying today? Why are U.S. stocks higher on, uh, today on this news? Uh, I, I'm told by some friends in the International Monetary Fund that what this will probably do is this will kick the can down the road six to eight months, and then we're going to have to renegotiate, then we're going to have to deal with Portugal, we're going to have to deal with Italy. And, but the hope is, is that in those six to eight months, uh, the senior European leaders, France and Germany, are going to get their act together and figure out a comprehensive PIP plan. If they don't, we're going to be in the same situation and six to eight weeks, uh, months meanwhile, from Meanwhile, we only have a bit about a minute, by the way, but meanwhile, you are just buying stocks here at home. That's how you're playing it. Yeah, I would not invest in Europe, certainly not in the financial sector, either there or in the United, uh, in the United couple States. A couple of the names, 30 seconds, just tell us the names. I, there are two, a whole bunch of uh, what I consider really undervalued stocks. Uh, SanDisk is one. It's flash storage. And anyone who knows what's happening with, with smartphones, the iPad, and high-end computers like Apple's most expensive they're using this these flash storage so it's a big growth area I also like industrial metals they've been oversold because people think that we're having a slowdown in manufacturing but the biggest buyers of these industrial metals are China Asia and emerging markets they're using it for infrastructure and I don't believe that they're going to cut back on government programs Paul, jobs programs. Right. So sorry we got to jump in there and not get fair, a cut off. not fair breaks. unfortunately but thanks so much that was Paul Dietrich of Foxhall Capital Management